Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Thank you for joining us. Today we'll be on uh, Joshua chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. <clears throat> Pardon me. I would like to remind you that you can send in your gift, your offering, whatever you'd like to send it in for. The church, the running of the church, the building fund, the ladies club, uh, the missions, Sunday school, whatever. Just send it in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. Would also like to remind you to pray for some people. Uh, Herschel Viers going through some cancer treatments. C.A. Griffith suffering with uh, cancer and other issues. Truman Turner, uh, Geneva Harold, Nancy Combs, Lucy Mays, Stanley Brewer, my brother William, sister Sylvia, uh, Millie Little and her daughter Pam, Dexter's wife, my uh, granddaughter Candace, and just all of the sick and in need wherever they might be and whatever their night, my, uh, need may be, whether it's physical, spiritual, or, or financial, God knows all things. Pray for our church, each ministry of it, uh, our uh, congregation, every, every one of our members and their families. Just ask God to bless each one of them. The elderly, uh, the widows and the widowers, that God would take care of them, all of God's people, wherever they may be, and of course, above all, the lost. Uh, they are the sickest of all. Let's go ahead and pray, open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the many good, great, perfect, wonderful gifts you've given us. Just ask you to bless our reading today of, of chapter 2 of Joshua. Bless our understanding, if it be your will, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. Continue to bless, be with us, guide us in all things. Lord, bless each one of those prayer requests made and answer them in, in your own perfect way, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. We ask you to continue to be with us in all things. Lord, continue to give us the desire to read about your word and to study it, Lord. Just be with us in all things. Guide and direct us in all things, and, and just let us give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor for all things. In Jesus Christ's name. We do pray it. Amen. As I said, we are in Joshua chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. <clears throat> and it says, uh, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shedem two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. So uh, Joshua is now uh, the main leader. He's the complete leader of Israel and, uh, in, in Moses' place. And his first official act is to send out spies to view the land. Now he only sent, sent out two spies. As you remember, it was opposed to uh, the 12 spies in number thir Numbers 13 that God told Moses to send out. Uh, uh, Joshua, by the way, was one of those uh, uh, spies. Joshua and Caleb then brought back good report, and then uh, uh, and they grow get back a good report saying it is a good land and, and that it, and Israel can take it because we can defeat all these people even the giants of the land uh, but ten other spies they brought back an evil report and they said the inhabitants of the land the Canaan were just too big they were too strong and, and the Bible says they weakened the hand of the people so they couldn't go in there and God said that that generation then would not be allowed to enter into the land now this time the spies only went into one city they only went into Jericho, and they went to in the house of uh, Rahab, and the Bible says she was in a harlot, which is a prostitute. Uh, Rahab, of course, was a, 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 a resident of Jericho, uh, so she was a Canaanite. Uh, she was a, a Gentile, a Canaanite. And we read in Matthew uh, chapter 1 that she was in the genealogy of the human side of Jesus, and, and I'll uh, talk about that in a second, but Matthew 1, 5 says, And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, which is the Greek name for Rahab. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Uh, Rahab and, and Ruth were both Gentiles, which proves that God's plan all along was to include Gentiles and Jews together in his plan of salvation. But to be clear, let me be very clear about this, Rahab and, and Ruth were uh, on Joseph's side, uh, the husband of Mary's lineage. And he was kind of like the foster father of, uh, of Jesus. The Bible says, as was supposed, the father of Jesus. So he raised Jesus. He was, uh, he was like the adopted father of Jesus. And that's just like us Gentiles as we're adopted into the family of God. The Jews uh, were brought in. They were, they were the olive tree, and then we were the wild olive tree brought in. And that's kind of the way uh, Rahab and uh, Ruth were in the lineage of Jesus. We're kind of in the adopted side of it. Nonetheless, we are children of God, and we are loved by God just the same. 
verses uh, 2 and 3. It says, And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. Now, uh, someone had told the king of Jericho that two Israeli men had come. They had come. They went into the house of Rahab, and they, had, and they were there. Uh, in there and the king demanded that then that Rahab would bring these men out and bring them to her because he said they were aware that these men had come and they had come to spy out the land they they probably been expecting them for a while and they knew uh, they knew of course that Israel was going to come and they were going to attack them at some point and so they didn't uh, you know they want to try to cut it off as quickly as they could uh, verses 4 through 6 says and the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they came. They were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them in the stalks, with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. Now uh, Rahab had hid the men on her roof, uh, in some stalks of flax. Let's talk about flax for just a minute. So flax then is a pale yellow. It has a pale yellow stalk with a purple uh, flower on it. And, and sometimes people with blonde hair are, are known as flaxen hair because it resembles that color of the flax. Flax is used uh, or was used at that time and still is I guess probably in some places and as a, in a variety of ways especially in Canaan it was at this time. It could be made into a, a drink or something to use as a healing herb it could be used as a cattle feed and mostly it was this it was used to make linen for clothing for different kinds of clothing uh, the flax was on Rahab's uh, roof for, for a particular reason and, and that was uh, so when, when the men came up searching uh, for them and saw all this flax there they didn't think of it they didn't think of anything strange of that because a lot of people had it up there large amounts of flax that was common to have on a roof uh, so and it was on the, it was put on the roof for this reason it wasn't just there by accident it was put on the roof uh, because they needed to be up there on, near the sun where it could dry out they had to be dried out before they could use it uh, to be made into a cloth now Rahab did lie to the searchers to protect the men you know the spies and of course it protected herself and her family because she would have been tried for treason found of treason and killed and uh, if they had found the men in her house and now the Bible doesn't say that God condoned the lie. It just says that it did. Now what the Bible always does, it reports something just as it happened. And uh, that's exactly what she had told the men. Uh, had told the, the people, obviously, actually, that the, that the men had come there. And that uh, she didn't know who they were or went, where they went. Verses 7 through 11 says, And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, uh, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth below, beneath rather. So after the searchers were gone uh, uh, to try to, to, to get the, the spies, uh, they, they left to chase them because they thought they were already left the city because Rahab had told them that Rahab uh, returned then up to her roof to talk to the spies and she told them exactly what they had come here to find out what they had come to hear and, and she said that Jericho and all the cities around all the countries there in Canaan knew they all knew that God had given Canaan to Israel because they had heard about the miracles God had done to Egypt and, and, and for Israel and how he had dried up the Red Sea for them and how even that he had killed and taken the land of Sihon and Og the giant on the other side of Jordan. 
And she told him that all of them were extremely afraid of Israel, that no man had any courage uh, left in him after they'd heard what God had done for Israel. And now that she also, now she believed that the Lord God, uh, what he had done for Israel, and she believed this then, that God was the God uh, of all things. He was the God of heaven. He was the God of earth. He was the God of creation. She understood that now she believed that. Now she was physically saved there that day and it seems as if she was spiritually saved as well. Uh, verses 12 through 14 says, Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we shall deal kindly and truly with thee. So Rahab had them to promise uh, that because she had hidden them, because she had protected them at, at uh, you know, the cost of possibly her own life, uh, them that they would make sure uh, that, uh, that her and her family her father, her mother, her brothers, her sisters, that they were kept safe during the siege when they came in. They agreed, uh, and they said if she kept their business secret, that they would spare her and her family. But there were three stipulations to this promise, as we'll read in a few verses later. Actually, the next uh, set of verses, verse uh, 15 through 22, says this, Then she let them down by a cord, through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt, uh, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get up, get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves three days there, three days, until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may you go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come unto the land. Uh, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and they brought my brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house and into the, and into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Uh, and if thou utter this our business, then we, shall, we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto thy words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet uh, line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So Rahab had told them to hide in the mountains for three days uh, uh, after she let them down from her uh, house with a cord. The Bible just says a cord there, but it says something else about it later, which was on top of the wall that went around the city. So that they wouldn't. Uh, so she was telling them to go hide in those mountains, so you don't run into these men that are searching for you when they're on their way back. Maybe maybe they'll run into you and they'll find you then. Now here's where the three stipulations come in uh, for the promise that the spies made to Rahab to keep her her and her family uh, safe. Number one was that that she put a scarlet thread, and that was the same one that she let them down with the cord out out of her window. And the two was that if anyone leaves the uh, Rahab's house after the attack starts there will be killed. Now, and this could be a way uh, to weed out those that are loyal to, to Jericho because some of the men, uh, when, when the fighting starts, they may run out and start to fight with Jericho and then that way God uh, would get rid of them along with the, the other people of Jericho. And the third thing would be is if she tells anybody about their visit or the reason that they're there, uh, then the promise would be null and avoid. And she agreed and, and right away, as soon as they left, she went out and hung, she, she hung the scarlet thread right out. She didn't waste any time at all. And they did exactly as she said, and they went and hid in the mountain for three days before they turned back to the Israeli uh, camp. And they, uh, uh, the, the men that were searching for them searched all around the whole way between there and uh, where Israel was camped out and they couldn't find them anywhere, of course. Uh, just as God had planned it. Now verses 23 and 24 to finish up this uh, 
chapter says, So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. So the spies returned and they gave a report to, to Joshua, a very good report, just as Joshua and Caleb had brought back a good report. These two brought back a good report. And they told Joshua, just as Rahab had told them, that all the inhabitants of the land, they said they faint because of us, and all, all of them faint because of them, they're, they're extremely afraid, and they, and they can't even, none of them have any courage, no man has any courage. Now I think it may have been uh, more accurate for the spies to have said that all the inhabitants faint because of God, of the God that we serve. But of course, God they were serving uh, was fighting for Israel. So, uh, because God's great, you know, God is a great God, and uh, and He should be feared. He needs to be feared. We should fear Him, uh, because He holds all of our faith in His hands. Uh, everything that we are, He, he uh, is because of Him, and He holds everything uh, that we have. He owns everything that we have, and He holds our very fate, our very lives, in His hand. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and I would just ask you to read uh, Joshua chapter 3 for tomorrow or for next week actually. And then we will uh, we'll be going over that and we'll see what God gives us for. Read it and see if God doesn't bless you. He will bless you uh, because of it. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this second chapter of Joshua, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all the book of Joshua, all the book of the Old Testament, all the five books of Moses that we read earlier. Just thank you for them, Lord, and all the truths that all of them contain. We thank you for all, uh, everything that you've done for us, Lord. We know that the things that you gave Israel and the, and the judgments you gave Israel were, were for in samples for us, the Bible says, and we thank you for that. We thank you for your love and mercy on them, and we thank you for your love and mercy on us, Lord. We thank you that you made a way for us through Jesus Christ, uh, that there was not a way. And we ask you to, to just continue to bless us, be with us, continue to give us that desire to read and study about you, Lord. And we thank you for it. Bless all those prayer requests we asked earlier, Lord, and be with us in all things. And let us give you, as always, the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen.